What's up, y'all? Thanks for stopping by Surge T channel. I am Surge T. Tonight, I'll be doing uh, my rundown and thoughts on AEW Dynamite. And let's get to it. Uh, CM Punk is on commentary, and of course, the love fest between him and the fans continues. But then the opening bout is Malachi Black one on one with Dante Martin. And speaking of Punk, he and Black in a one on one match is a dream match in WWE. Did I just say WWE? I meant to say AEW, and that needs to happen soon. I would have been one in WWE, but, uh, you know, time with AEW. I don't know why I got WWE on my brain, but uh, I do. For some reason, but let's continue. Uh, the match is very physical, and a lot of offense displayed here. Uh, Dante Martin can go, and I'm telling you, he is really doing well hanging in there. Going toe to toe with uh, Malachi Black, but he relied too much on that high flying stuff. I mean, it even caused uh, him uh, to uh, injure his knee, and he just continued to force the issue. And he did a impressive uh, dive off the top uh, rope using that one strong leg. You know, he couldn't go on that other knee, and um, when he comes down, he ends up. Uh, not connecting with whatever he was going to try to do and he ends up getting uh, caught by Black and he ends up eating a spinning back kick and uh, he goes for the pin. He goes for the pin real slowly because he actually got taken to the limit with uh, Dante by Dante Martin and uh, he, he able to get the pin and he's able to get the victory and then when he walks up the rampway I'm going turn around turn around not to face Dante Martin but to look at Punk because I really want to see a match between those two but he turns around and he looks at uh, Dante Martin and just gives him a nod and I'm thinking like what does that mean I can only, I can only go back to when he was wrestling um, Velveteen Dream and the match that they had made Velveteen Dream a star because he also did the very same thing where he recognized that this guy can go and then pretty much helped uh, elevate, uh, you know, uh, Velveteen Dream. But we all know that Velveteen Dream pretty much fucked his own career up by doing whatever he did. He got fired by WWE, and I don't even know if anybody's going to um, hire uh, Velveteen Dream. Or now, of course, he's going to be known as Patrick Clark because he can't retain the Velveteen Dream uh, thing. But uh, let's move on. Jurassic Express is uh, backstage and the Super Elite or Super, well Super Elite when they're all together but I think when it's Cole and the Bucks it's Super Click. But the Super Elite, uh, they attack um, Luchasaurus, put him through a table, they make uh, Jungle Boy look, you know, to watch it and then they take him out as well. So, uh, you know, that, that, that continues and it's an intriguing uh, ongoing rivalry, you know, but let's see what happens later. But uh, the Inner Circle are reunited, reunited, I said, and stand tall in the ring in Miami. Santana is on the mic, and as soon as he mentions America's top team, their music hits, and Dan Lambert comes out, accompanied by his ATT goofs. And Lambert asks for respect. He ain't getting none. And Jericho's intros, uh, you know, them as the fat face idiots. And then calls out Paige Van Zandt. And there's some good stuff here as he roasts her and her husband. Pretty much calling her out because a lot of people, I know that me for sure, are tired of her nonsense and tired of her uh, antics. Like she thinks she's tough. Instead of doing anything about it, she didn't even speak up. She, like she's useless. You know, like I said, acting like she's tough, saying, come on. And then she does nothing and says nothing. I'm going, can she at least say something? You know, instead of like, you know, back up what you're saying. You know, so you know what I mean. And then Le Champion uh, challenges uh, ATT to a ten-man tag match with Men of the Year and getting whichever other two guys that they want to tag with them. And Dan Laver says that he'll give the terms to the match next week. He kind of definitely runs these guys down. You know, saying that uh, Jericho has the biggest mouth, uh, Santana and Ortiz has the longest rap sheet, and then uh, calls out. Uh, says. Uh, Hager has a, the biggest head he's ever seen. I mean, do you step into your shirt when you pull it up, pull it on? And then uh, 
says uh, Sammy Guevara, calls him little, you know, Tiny Tim. You're the only one with the championship. Why don't you uh, to call, challenge us? You got you got more clout than any of these guys. You know, you know, you know what I mean. And I gotta tell you, Dan Lambert, he's annoying as fuck, but he he totally does get under your skin, and he's really good at cutting a promo. I kind of put him on same same par, same vibe, same feeling like with Paul Heyman, cause the cause like he's just like Paul Heyman, where they can just get anything you give them, they make gold out of it. The guy's good, the guy's good. I don't know the guy that's the guys that he's with, aside from the men of the year who are very very uh solid and good in the ring but the other the other guys i mean i don't see nothing even junior dos santos wrestled off on runs at rampage and nothing but didn't even impress me you know what i mean so it's like you know he surrounds himself like with those goofs it's just like you know once they show what they can do especially masvidal yeah he got two knees um snuck two knees in on um, jericho but one-on-one -on -one. let's see him do it one-on-one -on -one with jericho maybe then you know now the Triple A Tag Team Championship uh, match, or Justin Roberts pronounces it as Triple A A. Triple A A. Like stupid. Like, yeah, maybe that's how they pronounce it in 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 Mexico. But th th this isn't Triple A. This is AEW. You know. And then the guys are super. They're known as Super Ranas. That's the name of uh, Andrade's uh, uh, two guys, and they're gonna challenge the Lucha Bros for the tag team titles. The A triple A ones, not the triple A. Ah, I'm gonna say triple A. And then the Super Ronas run mass and it's FTR. And I called that and I am not surprised. And in the end, we see Dax and you know, Dax Harwood and Cash Wheeler become the new champions. And um I called it. I don't know if I said it to myself or I said it in a past video, but I, I had a feeling it was going to be them. I think I said something like, watch, it's going to be guys that you they're going to say, oh, looks like uh, FTR. Look, the same build, the same thing. I was thinking the same thing, or I may have said it on the video, but I know that I called it before. So I'm like going, and good on them. You know, they got a little bit of, uh, you know, satisfaction because now they're tag team champions, you know, so... Uh, Maybe they're going to go after the uh, AEW Tag Team Championships as well because, uh, you know, they want to be collecting that. They never said, they said that they're going to um, be serious now. They're going to do what needs to be done to be the old FTR, you know. And uh, this is a start. Now, Leo Rush is backstage with Dante Martin. And uh, did he just call himself uh, Dante Martin's new tag team partner? So I'm thinking, what does this mean for Dante's brother? And also for the team, them two, as top flight. I have a feeling that when his brother comes back, there's going to be some kind of a, a storyline that he's going to be, uh, you know, Dante Martin, you know, kind of like caught in between uh, his new packing partner and then his brother. You know, there's probably going to be something like that, definitely. Definitely. Now, do you want to, do you want to check or cash, says, uh, Andrade, because a little bit of a business deal he had with MJF, and it secured a tag team title shot for the FTR, who of course are members of the Pinnacle. And then uh, he says that, and MJF says both. And then Jose, the assistant to Andrade, conveniently has both. He has a, he has a, a, a you know, an envelope of money, and then on top of that, a check. And I'm going, can you guys uh, script it better than that, like? How about you have the thing of cash and then Andrade pulls out a thing and then says, here, just fill in the amount. You know, something like that. But he has it already conveniently there. It's like, come on, a little more planning, all right? A little more con reality. Even though, yeah, we wrestling is kind of like fantasy and all kinds of stuff and things just happen. And we're, we're supposed to leave our, you know, brains at the door and just watch and go along with it. But that thing looked really silly. Come on now. Now. Wheeler Yuta versus the Blue-Eyed Battler, as JR calls him, John Moxley. And I noticed Justin Roberts doesn't say, you know, John for like five minutes. Like how long he drags that out. He does it like that. And maybe somebody complained. Maybe somebody said, you know what, maybe you need to cut that down a little bit. Or maybe he's saying that, that that's not John Cena. Because he would do that with John Cena. And then just because John uh, Moxley's name is John, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the same thing I did with John Cena. Like maybe somebody said, you know what, that's... John Cena, you know, just, just, if you're going to do it, just cut it. Cut it down. 
And uh, Wheeler Yuta is just, they're all talking about him being a street fighter, him being a guy that's as tough as what do you call it. And why the hell did he let himself be on the receiving end of an ass kicking and a paradigm shift like that? And that was it. Wheeler Yuta is a loser. Does he do anything for the best friends? He's, he's either the temporary replacement for Trent Beretta. And then the audience didn't even pop for him. They popped for the music because it's, it's when he came out because that's uh, Orange Cassidy's thing. And then when it was him, they just got silent. Look, you know, the guy's talented in the ring. The guy can go. But he let himself get get jobbed. He jobbed out to him. to John. You know what I mean? But, uh, you know, whatever. That's, he came, he saw, he kicked ass, and then that's it. He's gone. Thank you very much. I got my paycheck. He's gone. John, John Moxley just exits the building. It's almost like he just walked through and just kept walking. Like, you know, that's how it was. But uh, anyway, let's go with the next match. It's uh, Super Click versus Dark Order's Evil Uno and Reynolds and Silver. I thought to myself, Reynolds and Silver. Doesn't that sound like a... They should call themselves the Aluminum Foil Boys because it's like Reynolds, like Reynolds Wrap and then Silver is a nut of the color of uh, Aluminum Foil, you know. It's kind of funny. I like this match. It was fun. It really was. I'm really coming around now to the Young Bucks. Uh, I think they're, they're now in the flow and I think now they're comfortable with what they're doing so it really does work and I, I, liked, I like seeing it. And it was a fun match, like I said, and I, even uh, my, Mr. Sacco made a, an appearance. There's a sock down there. There's Evil Uno, I think it was a sock, belonged to... Uh, I think it belonged to... The match was just going back and forth such a fast pace. And I think it belonged to... Because he lost his shoe, uh, one of the bucks. And then I guess he lost his sock. Or maybe he pulled the sock off. Puts it on and then he jams his fingers into... Uh, who was that? To uh, Nick? I think it was Nick. Maybe it was... Um, maybe it was uh, Matt. And that was funny. I like that. And then we see another funny thing where Silver and Reynolds, they pretty much take the place of the Young Bucks and give Cole a kiss. And Cole, Cole looks like this. And like, it was hilarious. You know? He's expecting his boys doing that. And I think that's a, it's a little bit annoying. Kind of like, it's kind of, you know, how long are they going to do that kind of thing? You know, I mean, I don't mind it. You know, whatever. They're, play, they're playing around or being playful in the ring. Okay. But it's, it's one of those things where it's like, man, but anyway, uh, I could say that, um, uh, uh, Dark Order is really talented. They put together in a succession of moves, and they do it all the time. It's like a uh, atomic drop. Uh, somebody does a neck breaker. The other, one, and then you know, and Wells does that, and then uh, Silver will do a, uh, a snapdragon suplex, and then you know, it's like all these. Things, I mean, it's really great just seeing what they do. Every time I see them do it to some to somebody in the ring, it's amazing. Great technical. Let's like, this is technically this is great choreography. The way these guys do it, without even missing a beat. I bet you these guys can do it sleeping, you know, in their sleep. You know what I mean? I, th I think they do it in their sleep. That's probably how they remember the moves. They probably have to, you know, kind of do that. But it's like they could do it blindfolded. I mean, this is how in sync they are, and I'm glad that they're together. And hopefully, they, I, I, I was expecting a back take segment where they were fighting, but they didn't do that. So that's good that I saw that. Now... They do that to Cole, but then in the end, Cole delivers a Panama Sunrise, and the Bucks connect with the BTE trigger, and then Cole lowers the boom, and the uh, Super Click win this match. Then Jungle Boy comes back, and he gets himself a little bit of payback by attacking them, and then he puts Brandon Cutler in the, uh, you know, the, the snare trap, and then he's taking his spray, and he's spraying it in his face. And a little bit of payback for Jungle Boy, and... I'm sick and tired of, uh, I'm pretty sure you guys have, have read uh, comments about people saying that they need to get rid of him because he has no personality. But I'm thinking, you see the the, the, the reaction in the ring. And when I'm watching Jungle Boy, I'm, 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 I'm a fan. I love what he does in the ring. Really? What do you want from the guy? The guy's still young. He's still finding himself. He's still developing his in-ring, uh, you know, charisma and all that stuff. He's still finding that. And I'm not saying he doesn't have charisma, but he does. But it's like, what do you guys want him to do? The guy talks with his, you know, wrestling. That's what he does. He doesn't necessarily have to be great on the mic. And I'm not saying he isn't, but it's just like, what do you guys want from the guy? He's still growing. He's still young in the game. And he can only get better and better. He's not going to be bouncing off the walls. What do you want him to do? Do, do, do head spins while he's fucking talking on the mic and, 
and 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 you know doing backflips as he does it too and stuff like that you want him to be so excitable the guy the guy can go that's all that matters for now and there's these people like i do believe it's yes yeah, uh, guys like fucking uh what's his name um jim Cornette and some of these other guys maybe even uh what's his name whoever but these guys need to kind of chill with that shit Give him some time, man. Guy's still young in the game, man. You know what I mean? He could only get better. But he doesn't suck at all. He's great. In the ring. Now, Cody and Arn, the ongoing saga. And he's being tested by the Nightmare family. Uh, he arrives there at the, their gym, their workout training facility. The, the you know what to call it? The uh, rolling um, door, you know, opens up. And then you see Brock Anderson. You see... Uh, uh, What's the old boy's name? But you see Red Velvet. You see some others. And Red Velvet slaps him. You know, tells him, you know, you know, whatever he's telling her. She tells him, like, you know, because, of, you know, it's like with Brock. It look, it's Mr. Hollywood. You know, um, whoever said it. But they're doing all that and they're, like, disrespecting him and all that stuff. And then in the ring, Arn's calling out scenarios, defense. You know, uh, fight back, offensive stuff, whatever, this and that. And he has a recall, recall and so re reply and all this stuff to whatever moves are coming at him. And then uh, Arn shows him, uh, a picture of uh, Arn and Dusty from back in the day. And a simple reminder to Cody, like it's a picture, like I said, a picture, a picture of him and uh, his dad, of, uh, you know, Arn and his dad. And pretty much uh, you see uh, Dusty, I believe he has uh, maybe barbed wire or something up against the face of thing. And then the crowd must be wondering, you know, what are you doing? He's going to put like 30 stitches in his head and stuff like that. And then Arn Anderson's talking about, because I deserved it. That's the reason why that's happening. And then he says, that Malachi Black deserves it. So now it makes sense what they're doing. They're trying to bring back the old Cody Rose. They're, all, they're trying to... Let him see that uh, what he's been doing, focusing too much on Hollywood TV shows and all that stuff, is kind of maybe taking the edge from him. That's the reason why he's been losing to uh, Malachi Black. So, uh, yeah. That's kind of a good thing to do. You know, you got to kind of remember, kind of remind him uh, where he came from and uh, kind of let him see that where he's going is not where he needs to be. Now, MJF, he comes out insulting Miami. And then announces himself in the ring after calling out Justin Roberts for not announcing him for his match with Darby. But uh, anyway, uh, Darby is not here because uh, what he did to him last week. You know, uh, him and his crew. The Pinnacle, right? And then, uh, you know, so he, he, well, he knows. He knows what he's doing. Like even Tony Schiavone is going, hey, Darby's not here, you idiot. No, he's not here, you jackass. Like, you know, he, lo he loves to call him names because he hates MJF. And then by force, we see uh, Bryce Rensburg, the, the referee, being dragged out to the ring by Wardlow and forced to count to 10 by uh, MJF. And as he gets to 9, the lights go out and Sting appears with bat in hand. He nails Wardlow and MJF hightails it and runs away. Well, he tries to act like he's coming back in, and he doesn't. Sting even dropped his bat. And MJF's like, no, he's like, he decided not to. So I guess that's probably going to be the match this week, uh, or it's going to be Wardlow versus uh, Sting. But I wonder where Darby Allen is. What happened to him? You know, he got beat down. But uh, maybe he's licking his wounds and he's ready to come back. I can't wait to see that. Because MJF really needs his ass kicked so many times. It's, it's not even funny. You know, we love to hate the guy. Now, Anna J, she's backstage. And it's interrupted by Dr. Britt Baker. And a fight breaks out. And it seems like wherever Tony goes, with the microphone in hand to interview somebody, the two people brawl. And that's what they were talking about too on the, on the, on the commentary. You go like, man, I think I think they need to uh, stay away from Tony. I think that was Jr. But funny, it was a funny line. Now, Kira Hogan looks to lose against Penelope for because with a two and three record, it may come to fruition. Uh, and then we see a Muda lock that taps out the overrated Kira Hogan. And I say that because I've heard nothing but stu good stuff about her. People are saying this and people saying that about her. And she's here, and every time I see her, she loses. And she is somebody who really has to... Maybe it's just because she's normally a tag team wrestler. 
She's a two-time uh, Impact uh, uh, Women's Tag Team Champion. But as a singles competitor, she needs a lot of work. Hopefully she continues to work at it, get better and better. And, um, you know, because I don't wish anything bad on anybody, even though the people, even the ones that I, I rip apart and, 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 and talk shit about. But, you know, there's always room for improvement. And hopefully she does. She's got a good look, very pretty girl. She's got a decent move set. I've seen some good stuff out of her, especially that that running thing where someone's in the in the corner, you know, with their head against the bottom turnbuckle, and she slides and does a, a kick and looks devastating. Looks good, but um, yeah, you know what I mean. I like I like her look. I like her presence, you know, and stuff like that. And you know, I like her. She's a pretty girl, and I'm going. Yeah, let's. I want to see her get better. I, I really do. And then um. Ruby Soho comes and gets her some, a Penelope Ford, and she ends up throwing her, tossing her to the outside of the ring, and then Bunny has her friends back. The Bunny comes to uh, Penelope Ford's aid, and then Ruby looks like she wants uh, the both of them. That's what it appears as, and you know Ruby, as much as we all know Ruby, she definitely will take on two or three at a time. She's a, you know, a scrapper. She gets in there and she she's gonna beat your ass if she can get one or two of you. She don't mind. She don't care. You know she'll do it. Now the Redeemer Miro is talking to his God, I guess, and he can't go home to his wife like he is. And he will make a and he will make him a champion again. He's talking to his God, because if he doesn't, if his God doesn't, Miro says that he's going to be his God's enemy, and that's his full 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 focus. Is he wants to be champion again. Ever since losing the uh, TNT title to uh, Sammy Guevara, that's has been his uh, mission. That's been his focus. So go on and get it. Go and go, well, how come you're not challenging instead of instead of going like this to your God? How about you challenge Sammy Guevara? You know, I thought I thought he he made his point clear when he kicked his head in and along with Fuego, what the last week when that happened. That didn't, you know, give him another shot or at least make Sammy go, you know, get him in the ring. I don't care. I'll put my title on the line. Now, Tony Schiavone interviews the hangman. Tony Schiavone, man, interviews backstage, interviews in the ring. He's all over the place. I, I, t I tell you, man, he's a teleporter. How does he get from one place to the other? You know, you know, like he's all over the place. He must have superpowers like, like, the, you know, like the, you know, the Avengers and something like that. Now, He's interviewing the, you know, Hangman Adam Page, and he's going to be the number one contender for the world title for uh, Kenny Omega's uh, AEW championship at Full Gear. And he's excited for Full Gear, he says, but he has failed, lost his confidence and friends. But the one thing that grew and got louder was the cowboy shit chant. Okay. Uh, and Hangman says it's real to him. Uh, it meant him taking his shot. And, uh, wow, so that's what it, that means. Not literal shit. And then, in my rea realization, cowboy shit literally means anything. And this promo was cowboy shit. Or just plain shit. Because he tried to make that term meaningful, but it didn't make sense. Like, he, they're trying to do something with it, but it's, didn't it sound like, it sounds more like it was just a random, uh, you know, uh, chant that, got popular and everybody says it when hangman's in the ring and then i guess the writer said you know what or they even told uh, hangman page because i know that these guys tend to like let these guys go with what they are you know, let them make them let them write their own promos which is good that's how you should do but the way they went about explaining what cowboy shit means it kind of like uh didn't make sense to me i don't know it's like it means anything like you're saying one thing i'm going okay and it means this and it means that and i, and I go you can't mean everything you know what i mean like it was just it was this thing, you know. I mean, I love Adam, uh, you know, Hangman Page. You know, he's great, and he he can definitely cut a promo. And, and this promo was, you know, he did cut it cut a good promo. But at the same time, the, the the content of it, I don't know. I just didn't, didn't I didn't get it. It makes sense, but you know, that's me. Now, Doctor Britt versus Anna J. Uh, this is gonna be this was announced uh, for uh, Rampage. Pac versus Andrade two. So it looks like it's going to be a good Rampage. I was very, very uh, disappointed in this past Rampage. I was very, very, like, insulting to it. I did not like it. I didn't like anything about it. Usually I'll like something about it, but I didn't like it. 
So this looks good. It's very promising. And then on Saturday Dynamite, we're going to have another Saturday, Di Saturday Night Dynamite. I guess it's because I guess the NBA is on or whatever sports this thing is on. So they have to go on, be on Saturdays again. On there, we see Malachi Black versus Cody Rhodes, uh, number three. And I don't mind us. It's been, it's been a good um, rivalry. Feud. It's been pretty much one-sided with the mock eye black but maybe cody's gonna win this time now the main event is the infamous the infamous uh bobby fish versus brian danielson and this on uh, rampage buy-in i don't know why rampage had a buy-in isn't that usually for the pay-per-views but uh i'm like why and then because of that i didn't get to see the danielson minori suzuki match which i know was a had to be a great a great damn match and uh, this match, uh, speaking of it, was a very technical match, um, very mat based and scientific. I really loved what these two do, you know how they got along with each other. But a heel hook by Danielson uh, makes Fish tap in the end. Uh, Fish was trying to make Brian Danielson tap as well. He even did a suplex into a Falcon Arrow or whatever you want, I think it was, and that was brutal. But a very good match, and uh, Fish, uh, ta Fish or losing really doesn't make him look weak, because the guy made Daniel Bryan, I mean Bryan Danielson, doing the same thing that Punk said. Punk said that, and he goes, oh, you know what, maybe I should call him American Dragon, you know, because he kept saying Daniel Bryan, or he said it once, I think. But, uh, you know, he made uh, Bryan Danielson look good, and I think Bryan Danielson, Bryan Danielson made uh, Bobby Fish look good, too, so that's always a good thing. But good match, great main event. Now let's go to the theme before I end this video because I've gone run over a, a little bit too long. But uh, it's the AEW World Title Eliminator Tournament bracket. It was unveiled and it's going to be Dark Orders 10 versus John Moxley, Orange Cassidy versus Hobbs, and then you have Dustin Rhodes versus Brian Danielson, and Lance, Lance Archer versus uh, Eddie Kingston. A uh, very very good uh, set of uh, competitors there. Very surprised about Dark Order's 10, but uh, there's nothing but good things always said about him and that he can go. So, yeah, give him give him a shot. Uh, maybe he'll win the tournament. You'll never know. Then Friday Rampage, uh, they're going to start it already this uh, next Friday. And it's going to be Orange Cassidy versus Hobbs. And then on Saturday, they have uh, Archer versus Kingston and Dustin Rhodes versus Brian Danielson. And that'll be a very, very good uh, Rampage because you have... Orange Cassidy and Hobbs, and then you have Dr. Britt and Anna Jay, and then Pac versus uh, Andrade. So that should be a good Rampage. I should have a good experience watching Rampage. Hopefully it'll make up for this past Fridays. But uh, that's my review. Review? Well, that's my rundown and thoughts, and review, somewhat, of uh, AEW Dynamite, a special Saturday Night Edition. And it was very good. I enjoyed it. Everything uh, came together, everything clicked, and I liked what I saw, and it was great. So anyway, uh, for those of you who stopped by and checked out my video, I appreciate it. And in closing, as always, take care.